Hello, everyone. Good day. Good day to all of you. Uh, welcome to this webinar on database farm management and how it makes a DBA's life a lot easier. So I'm, pres I'm your presenter, Ray Lawrence Oricampo. I've been a database administrator, uh, and my first job was more on software development before going to a more of a database-related work. And I've joined DB Watch last year, uh, June of 2020. So in this webinar, we'll be looking at uh, what database for management is. So we'll explore how it works. We'll go, we're going to compare and contrast uh, single instance management versus database for management. Uh, we'll go, we're going to look at the benefits of database for management. Next, we're going to look at the tools uh, specifically designed for uh, database for management, which will be centered on DB Watch Control Center. Lastly, or the third, we'll look at uh, farm management applications. So we're going to contrast and compare uh, database farm management with single instance uh, farm management. And finally, we're going to look at uh, wrap everything with uh, my final thoughts. So before we begin, I would like, we're going to have a poll. So we're going to look at how many database instances do you have in your organization? So you could uh, answer it while I'm explaining and I could access, <clears throat> you could uh, answer it while I'm uh, presenting such that uh, you could have an easier time while doing it. So for per section of we, the poll is, so for, for each section, there will be uh, polls for each, uh, for each section. And uh, please answer that while uh, I'm presenting. So what is database farm management? So this is the simplest, the million dollar question we have. And in the simplest form, uh, it is taking care of an actual farm. So you're taking initiative to prevent actual, or to prevent disasters in your farm, and you want to make it as profitable as possible. But I am not a farmer and I don't have any uh, experiences in farming. So <clears throat> I'm going to use an analogy uh, to uh, connect database farm management. Uh, to connect database farm management with, uh, with a game that I personally love. So that game is Harvest Moon. If you're familiar with, if you're familiar with that game, there's a simple mechanic in. Uh, there's a simple mechanic in. Hello. So there's a simple mechanic in, um, in Harvest Moon, which is uh, watering the plants. So you have an entire crop, and what you do is you water them every day. So you have. For one crop, you have a uh, you have a three by three grid, and that activity is you water them daily, and if you forget to water them, uh, chances are they delay your profit, which you have to exert maximum effort. And like database farm man and like database management, we have to monitor them daily, such that, such that. Uh, uh, the, our resolution and actions are faster. And at the same time, we exert uh, proportional amounts of effort and time. But the problem is, if there is a larger farm, assuming that we, we have this farm, the entire farm, and it has 200 tomato plants, then uh, that will be a problem since we have to work at uh, water all of these plants. And if that's it, it takes 10 minutes, 10 in-game minutes to water one plant, then that will be 2,000 in-game hours and roughly 33 hours you spent. And what do you do to, um, 
to uh, remedy this problem? Well, the game provides you two different solutions. You could employ nature sprites where they can uh, where they can water the plants for you on your behalf, or you can upgrade your tools such that you're watering at the same amount of time with uh, covering a lot of uh, plants. Because when we're managing SQL servers in the past, we have a more familiar feel with them. It's more of, uh, it's more of, uh, we have familiarity, we have an intimate relationship with our uh, SQL instances. Notice how we, how this DBA in our example, names all of our uh, instances. We have Tatooine, Tanab, Celos, Manda. Those are from uh, Star Wars, from the Star Wars uh, universe, and he has more of a personal relationship with them. And this reminds me of how how I treat. Though my interactions with databases and instances in my one of my previous companies, so uh, one of my we had so that was a an IT solutions company, and the largest database was dedicated to our uh, largest client. So I had a daily interaction with our client, uh, with those with that client uh, instance, and if you ask me about anything about the client uh, instance, then I could give you what they do, what they are, uh, the IP addresses, the data structure, or the business processes. So, but if you drag me to another project or ask me about instances that I'm not really familiar with, then I need someone with a more interaction to that uh, instance. Because as I'm exposed to those instances, I have that knowledge, that familiarity with those instances. And the other round, uh, I don't have those from, I don't have that interaction with them. And I need to query inside those, uh, uh, in query on those instances such that I could get the general information. And that's how we interact with our personal lives. It's not just, we have, is such a small circle of people that we can only give so much attention with. And this is a problem of uh, SQL servers today, of instances today, that there is a bigger farm involved, there's a bigger group involved. It becomes less personal and more methodological. We feel disassociated with more instances and databases. And at the same time, you might find, you might be struggling as I did in that moment. Let me ask you DBAs, how many databases or instances can you name on the top of your head? Managers, can you ask that same question to your DBAs? Whether we admit it or not, we can only name a few instances. And we can feel that same familiarity with a, lo a large number of instances. And what do we do? We establish structure and control by serializing and encoding metadata through their server names. As you can see here in this example, we named it dbws 12 osl 32 It is a database with Windows Server 2012 located in Oslo in server number 32. And you can still know a few of these instances, especially those problem child, uh, problem, problematic uh, instances in your farm that they cause you a lot of headache. And there's another way to do that. You could utilize custom scripts and uh, jot down <clears throat> or and jot down jot down that information into Excel, their IP addresses, version disk usage, session count, memory usage. However, that information remains static. And here's the difference between single instance and database farm management. In single instance management, it's more of a traditional approach. Hardware and software 
We make sure that hardware and software are compatible. We make sure that hardware is correct and functioning. We perform adjustments to CPU, memory, and disk usage, or any hardware optimization. And we optimize scripts and restructure indexes in a database as needed. Because the goal of single instance management is to optimize hardware utilization. Let's not confuse this with database farm management. It is not a macro level approach of single instance management. Because our goal in database farm management is different. We optimize DBA's time and productivity, research utilization across the entire farm, and optimize control across that farm. Because at the end of the day, or the key takeaway here is that instances in a farm are all interconnected. In performance tuning an entire farm, we repurpose and reallocate resources just to save costs from needless procurement of software and hardware, and we spread the load across the farm, which leads to better overall performance compared to single instance management. And have you heard the law of diminishing return? So let's, example, let's use an example for single instance management. Because in the first part, when you apply uh, effort into a single instance with a proportional amount of time, then there's a little bit of improvement. And as we grow or as we uh, involve more effort on it, then you will see a significant improvement. However, as time passes by or as you keep on giving it more effort, it, can own, it will always reach a ceiling. And this is where the wasted effort and time we have is due to hardware and software limitations. And if we flip it over, we could see that the ceiling of, the, of that instance for one, uh, for one instance could be seen here. So you're exerting large amount of time and effort for just one instance. And you can see the differences. You're, you're max, you exert maximum effort, and you have just for only one instance that can only reach that peak. However, if we stretch that with database farm management for more instances, you will see this graph. It's very well. It's it's very uh, it's very different or very weird. Why? Because if you're having more instances, shouldn't be the effort that we're doing, our tuning, uh, monitoring, and maintenance effort should also increase proportionally with the same number of uh, instances? Well, let's look at it in another slide. I'll go back to that. And here's one of the reasons why we manage a database farm. So we manage it by standardization and consistency. We standardize versions, patches, configuration across the farm. And it's easier to deploy changes and have a reference point. Um, maintain, we maintain consistency comparing version and patches, known which, uh, we will know which databases are out of sync. We adjust settings and configuration to fit a standard detect and adjust instances that are not cohesive to that standard in place, and compare differences in our environment. And that leads to automation. We are assured that maintenance routines are functioning identically in all database instances, and possible fixes can be deployed automatically. And with both standardization and automation, we don't need to have a change control because it leads to improved workflows. And it's no longer an isolated case for a database. And we're involving the entire organization. This enables collaborative involvement in alerting the correct teams to handle that problem with more information at hand. Consequently, it greatly improves turnaround time and SLAs inter, inter, <clears throat> sorry, interdepartmentally or externally and helps prioritize DBAs with, with the most important task. 
And if you put that back on the same graph that we have before, it makes sense that because of automation, standardization, and improved workflows, you put little effort with more instances involved, which leads to, which enables your organi organization to be scalable. And here is a graph showing the menu, uh, the control a DBA has with more instances involved with manual monitoring. So at the first height, you have, you can exhibit control over a few of instances. And you, but you lose control with more instances involved. And at the end of the road, with more instances, you can no longer maintain that set of control. But what, what, do, what happens if we involve database farm management? Well, you see a straight line. The, ex the exerted effort is still the same despite the number of instances involved. Now we're done with part one. Uh, I'll be ending the poll. Thank you for an answering. And I'll be introducing the next poll. Sorry. So we're going to look at what is the more important aspect for database for man, uh, most important aspect for a tool. So let me introduce this. Uh, what tools are we using? So for single instance management, as I, we have the standard SQL Server Management Studio, which is always familiar for all uh, DBAs. And for DBWatch, we'll use an appropriate tool like database for, uh, for database farm management, which is Control Center, which is good for multiple instances. But before we could deep dive on the differences between both tools, we need to learn what is DBWatch Control Center. Well, if you open the window, if you open any DBWatch uh, control center, you'll always be greeted with three specific modules and a tree view. So you have the monitor mo monitoring module, which is shown by the heart. So you, so you could uh, monitor all instances with this. You have the management module which is for configuration and implementing uh, changes. And you have the farm module, which is basically for uh, database farm management. And here at the side, you have the groupings of the instances registered. So you could uh, select them by type, by platform, by statuses, by cluster, and um, super service group. So let's look at the monitoring module first. So this is very important. Um, we have the tab, which shows the instance status. So we are currently in the instance status dashboard. And we have all the issues above, up, up below, beneath the tab. So it shows all of the issues that I forgot. Well, basically I forgot to back up all of my uh, instances. So it was checked around um, the status time at 7 a.m. And we have below it, it, you can find all the groupings, all of the statuses. So we have six instances which has uh, lost connection. <clears throat> 23 which has uh, status alerts, three with warnings, four with no problems, and zero monitored, meaning uh, those uh, not monitored are their registered instances, but no instance, uh, no installed jobs. So we have a single instance view. So in the in single instance view, you have four different jobs. So you have the availability jobs, which monitors availability of files or database like uptime information and logs. You have capacity jobs, which monitors memory capacity and consumption like database memory, file sizes, and growth rates. You have maintenance jobs, which monitors maintenance routines and logs. 
You have performance jobs, which monitors database transaction and, and activity like sessions, uh, memory usage, and file and I/O transfer. So we have uh, the set, the list of jobs here, and the differences between uh, jobs with statuses and jobs without statuses are those with job statuses they have statuses, and jobs without statuses are clearly for more of information purposes. And at the top, you could have you could see the breakdown of all of the job statuses. Where we have 30 jobs installed, so 14 without uh, statuses, uh, two with alarms, two with warnings, and 12 with uh, no problems. Next, uh, uh, sorry if you're all raising your hands, I'll be, uh, we have a uh, section later for questions, so I'll be answering all of them, okay? So next is for management. So for management, we have the service overview, which shows you all of the uh, the the server information. Next, you have instances per platform. So it's a breakdown of all uh, instances per platform. And finally, the top 50 instances. So it's just uh, a tabular format of the A list of uh, top instances in that in your database farm. So yes, this is one of the mo most important part on how to open a single instance view for a manage management module. So this is the tree view. So at first you have the server and you have the group and you select the instance. Always notice that the black arrow points down when you're clicking it and you will have all of the instance management menu. So you have the DB, which, uh, DB watch alerts, which shows jobs with warning or alarm statuses. Uh, configuration, a view that shows server and database information. Performance, track uh, session and database activity. Sessions, active sessions in your instance. SQL worksheets, where you can write queries and many more. So this is a single instance view. So, it shows you uh, the server information, your host name, everything. You have the logical reads. So this is a visualization of uh, session and logical reads per second. This is the top 20 online databases that are available in your uh, instance and the top 10 memory objects. So let's do an example. Let's, we want to disable a job. What do we do? We click on database, uh, access Q, SQL server agent here. Then if you click it, uh, the black arrow, you will see jobs. Then you access jobs, you will go to this dashboard. And this dashboard, you could select one of the uh, running jobs and you could uh, enable it or disable it. So here we want to disable it. I, we want to delete it. So we have another one. Uh, we want to add the job. So you still follow the same process. You go to SQL Server Agent, then you go to Jobs, then you right click on Jobs and you create a new job. And finally, Monitoring Module. So there are five different overviews here. So you have the inventory overview, which monitors uh, database farms group per platform, uh, edition or version. Resource overview is to check this usage, memory usage of your farm. Farm jobs shows the current statuses of your uh, database farm jobs, recent job installed and previous jobs executed. Maintenance overview, uh, monitor database connection, indexes, data fragments and database statistics. And performance overview checks current session and performance statistics. So here is a dashboard. So it shows you all um, the number of instances, the number of database, the number of the, the number of the databases, instance per platform and database per platform version. So let's do an example uh, using the navigation tree. We want to know, um, 
we want to monitor SQL Server databases. What do we do? You go here, you click the uh, inventory overview, and per platform, you click it. So it will show you the MS SQL Server. And you click that, and you will get this dashboard. So you can click one of the instances. So it shows you all the SQL uh, instances registered in your farm. And you could it will direct you to uh, the monitor, monitor uh, single instance management monitor, or the for the management management module for that single instance. Now we're done with the Q and A, uh, with the sorry with the poll. And I'll be moving on. Sorry, we interchange poll one and poll three. So please answer poll three. And the question here is how many instances does your organization have? So please answer this while I'm presenting. And we're going over the applications of database farm management with single instance, ma uh, instance management. So is, this will be applicable. We'll be looking at it in three different, uh, three different subsections. So the overview of database farm management, which is a bird's eye view of monitoring uh, an entire database farm. So we're also looking at the resource and performance analysis, which makes data, which is uh, easier to perform RCAs with database farm management, and reports, which we could generate a report across the entire farm. So when checking the number of databases using a single instance management or SQL Studio, what do we do? We have three options or we have three methods. One, you could use queries. You could use, uh, we could also prepare custom scripts with added configurations. Or you could go to another method of manual checking. This involves getting an Excel file and jotting out down all of the information provided when you're checking those uh, instances or those databases. Or you could generate a report, which is the easier, easiest of the two. However, you have problems with each. For uh, queries, you have, you have to give time to develop them or to write them down. That's also uh, applicable for custom scripts, which will really take you a lot of time. For manual checking, well, you need a lot of patience doing this. So it's not just a one-time effort. And when generating SQL reports, um, not all of the information will be provided. So <clears throat> that's really a problem. But let's look at it with three instances for farm management. So what I did is just I registered the instances for three instances and I went to the farm module. So this is the inventory overview. So as you can see, we have three instances and 12 databases. And we have everything that we need, the information that we need. However, if you're, and if you have more databases, it will be easier to check them because you have a diverse pool of information and then easier to set up which less needs less time and effort to do so. What about resource and performance analysis? How do we do that? So you have two options. Again, you can generate a performance dashboard or use a resource manager if the dashboard is, or use it as an alternative if the dashboard is not yet, um, does not give you the full details. Problem here is, uh, this is only applicable for one instance. While the resource manager could give you that information, that live information, but it's not too specific. So you still have to dig, uh, deep dive on those information. But if you use a re if you use database for management or DB Watch Control Center, then you get this graph. You could see it in the resource overview and the performance overview. For a resource overview, you get the disk usage and memory usage. Well, for performance overview, you get the idea of how many sessions there are, which instances are most used, and most active databases. 
So let's like this example. So you want we saw that there's a problem with 2019 dev local, which is the instance memory check. So what I did, I look at the details with only uh, with only left clicking it, it shows me all the, the instance memory check details. So it's very easy to use and it gives you very a very uh, good feedback on what to do. So you know what to do and and what's going on with your database farm. So even if with more with more instances, it becomes easier because you got you get more information that you need. And control center does the analysis presented in visuals. So you can quickly pinpoint uh, potential problems and proactively manage those instances. Because as a DBA, you should spend less time as possible on monitoring and analyzing data and more on the important task as li like managing or administrating your database farm. And finally, we have the single instances. Uh, this can be still done with SQL uh, Management Studio but still limited to one instance. Uh, it's not really what you want for the report. You need to settle with uh, custom customization. And customizing a report requires tremendous, tremendous time and effort. So you have to set up and configure servers, uh, develop custom scripts. Most of the time, it will be eating resources. And if you look at database farm management, uh, well, the solutions is easier. So. It's easily scheduled, no need to make custom scripts. So you have an option if you're using SQL servers, you can find them, uh, the database health checks and information from them. And you could access them in a secure server and or they could be emailed directly to you. So in conclusion, database farm management focuses on optimizing uh, DBA's time and productivity on research utilization op and optimizing control across the farm. Because database farm management, we want to have standardization, consistency, automation, and improved workflows. And the tool that is very appropriate for database farm management is DBWatch Control Central because of the following modules that we presented. And with DBWatch Control Center, you get convenience, control, and completeness in checking the number of databases, uh, resource and performance analysis, and report generation. So, my final thoughts. Um, let me share you a story in one of my previous companies. And before joining DBWatch, uh, database farm management was a foreign concept to me and uh, I don't really know what to do, what database farm management is. So we had this problem of it's very re recurring issue with one of our uh, instances. And we dubbed it as data, uh, a database slowness since everything in the system will get very slow. What we did as uh, DBAs, we decided to put no locks on all of our stored procedures just to make it faster. And it was proposed by one of my uh, DBA lead. So I have full faith in that DBA lead and with, because he's sporting 15 years of experience. And the issue was resolved for a little bit of time, but it popped up around uh, two weeks later. So what we did, we, um, we had another meeting and another proposal was just to do it the old way, restructured the indexes. So we spend one weekend on our, comp uh, on our office uh, doing that, restructuring our indexes. And it really disburdened uh, the slowness in that instance, but we forgot to apply it in other uh, in other instances. Well, we know that we're really confident that it will work this time. And close enough, by that Monday meeting, we didn't hear a, a problem for with our databases. 
funny thing is, as I uh, went out of the company, I had the talk with one of my colleagues. So we had a get together and we talked about, uh, so I was, uh, we had a, uh, we talked about that single instance and how funny it is. So we were just remembering things. Then, then he mentioned something that uh, even if the instance was fixed, it popped up when I left, which really surprised me. And worse, it, uh, it spread or it, it also affected no, uh, the other instances. So it's, it's not a lack of foresight. We, we don't know what really happened uh, the, on that, on that uh, instance, but it really failed or <clears throat> it uh, affected the other instances. So I had that reflection after talking with him, I had that reflection on how, how could it be different? Well, now, how could it be different if what I know could be applied to that company, to, to one of my company, companies? And, and this question has, uh, has stayed on, has stayed on my mind up till now. Uh, what would happen if I knew, I knew about database farm management early on? And here's some of my answers to it. Uh, with more information about the problem, we could have acted proactively. We could have spent less time in applying unnecessary solutions. Um, stakeholders, stakeholders are assured that a definite solution is at hand. Uh, indirectly, it could be shortened a few weeks to resolve the problem, and it could have saved us more time. And I ask you, or the audience, how could you apply or what will you do that you know database farm management? What can you do to your organization such that you could improve your data or your DBA's time or your, you as a DBA, how could you improve your time with database farm management? Thank you. Uh, I'll close the poll. Thank you for answering. And we could start with the Q and A. So anyone has a question? Uh, <clears throat> so we have, uh, can you explain any features that are available with DB watches compared to Spot? So we have uh, a full documentation on all of the release notes for DB watch. Uh, <clears throat> DB watch has one of the best features for DB watch is its management module. So instead of just uh, a monitoring tool, uh, we have a management module where you could configure all of uh, your, in your registered instances. So if you want to do, you can check our, our blog, our blogs, our documentation on that, it will explain more of it. So that's one of the more, uh, the better features of uh, DBWatch compared to our uh, contemporaries. About discovery of databases on network. So we have, um, we have, uh, could you clarify this question? Will you tell us about the discovery of databases on, uh, on network? We do have uh, an auto discover feature for DB Watch Control Center. Uh, uh, maybe I need to get more of your information re regarding that. So you could explain it, uh, explain it more. Does DB Watch Controls uh, supports Maria DB? Well, yes, um, but uh, okay. Let uh, let me clarify this. Uh, we, you could look at it in the release notes. So there's we're still looking at the drivers. There's uh, it's not a full support, but it depends on the version you're trying to use. So you could look at in our wiki pages such that uh, you could you could have an idea on if it fits your current company's version. Uh, and our, uh, 
call. Uh, for the last question, are we calling to support non-SQL uh, databases long, like MongoDB? Uh, we're still looking into that. Uh, I don't have the answer for it right now, but um, we're looking into that. Uh, and we will publish it or we will inform you about it when we have the answers. Any more questions? Q&A. Okay, so what is the meaning of loss connection? Which uh, meaning of a loss connection is that it's that the the database connection is down. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the agent is down or it's it's a database is down. Uh, how can we handle this issues? Uh, as for the others, um, hmm. I'll, uh, cross queries. Hello, Satish S. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, this is really a good concern. We'll we'll take note of that. We'll send a uh, sales representative for that, since uh, this is a lang lengthy conversation and I have a few minutes to answer everything. But we'll take note of that uh, about your question. And it's better that we have someone from the sales representative and one of our developers that will answer that. Uh, discover db12 um, as for the release notes it, we're still more on the four uh, platforms of uh, sql uh, sql mysql uh, postgres and oracle so we'll look we'll still going there for uh, to further improve the the product, DB Watch using well, DB Watch has a uh, you could have uh, a access control within DB Watch, so you could set that for uh, the other users. So that's that's one of uh that's one of the positives in using db watch that it's it's not uh well it it has its own access control uh, yes when you see red warnings you could you can look at the issues, click on one of the uh, jobs, and will give you it will give you uh, the edit, the information, the details. Well, it will give you the specifics. It will give you all the what you need for uh, 
for for a more for more uh, established reasoning or for a more established RCA. Because in RCA, we when we look, we don't get to the point of the problem. There could be multiple factors affecting it, and we have to eliminate each. But the good side about this in DB Watch, when you're trying to deep dive, when you're trying to deep dive on an on a on an issue, then you could you have with more information, then you could eliminate more of the uh, possibilities. Um, Okay, so uh, there's no more questions or no, no more answers. I hope I answered all of your questions, even if uh, with this limited amount of time. So yeah, I may not able to answer all the questions uh, deeply because, uh, well, I have a limited time for this. So thank you all. Um, but before we end, we're giving them uh, a six, six months try, uh, license for five instances. So you can play around, play around with uh, DB Watch Control Center. It will be very, uh, as I did, I introduced DB Watch Control Center to you guys. And with this six months uh, warrant, uh, validity for five instances, that will be a good way to know, the, to know DB Watch Control Center. I hope you download it and we send it, uh, we'll be sending the link. You can screen screenshot this uh, and go to this uh, website. So, um, hmm. 30 seconds. So before I end this, this presentation. So everyone done. I hope you had a wonderful time at the seminar. I hope you learned a lot with uh, database, database farm management and my name is Ren and I will be signing off. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for an hour. I really uh, thank you for this one wonderful seminar with you guys. Thank you.